How's it going? Everybody doing well? Excellent, excellent. All right, we are gonna, you know, take you through a little bit of a journey here, but it's just it's just great to see everybody. Um, and thank you so much to Susanna and Games for Change uh, for hosting myself and all of you here today. I think it's I think it's going to be really exciting. So, thank you for taking the time to let me uh, share some things with you. So, as Susanna mentioned, I'm Leo, uh, managing director of Global Games for Play. I can imagine that for many of you, uh, this might be one of the first times that you've come to an event like this in quite some time. I know it is for me. It's like one of the first big things since you know the pandemic began. So really excited to be here. Um, I just want to take you in knowledge kind of what the world is going through right now and it's still going through. But I don't want to dwell on it. You see, I think that now is really the right time to look forward to what the world can be when we actively engage in it. So that's really what this talk is going to be about today. So our theme is going to be change matters, games matter, and you matter. And I'm really going to start with uh, change matters. Let's see, oh, it didn't change. Click, there we go, with change matters. Um, why? You see, like, I've talked about my day job being the managing director for uh, Google Play, et cetera, but I'm also a father of three kids. This is actually my, my niece, uh, Sloan. And then this is my um, son, Adrian, my daughter, Alicia. My 15-year-old refused to pose for a picture. He's like, no, thank you, Dad. I don't want, to, I don't want any part of this. Um, you know, but I'm also a husband you know, to my wife. This is my wife, Andrea. She's a, she's a teacher. And I'm also a dog dad to, uh, this is Chewbacca. You know, um, Chewie is my co-pilot, of course. Uh, but you know, I'm also um, a black man in America. I have family here in New York City. My mother was born in New York City, actually. My dad was born in Uganda. I was born in Nairobi, Kenya. One of my kids is neurodiverse, and so as a family, we actually negotiate autism and ADHD uh, every single day. Um, I have an Indian niece and nephew, Chinese cousins who were born in Japan, grandparents from both uh, Belarus and Ukraine, um, and I'm actually, you might be surprised, 33% Ashkenazi Jew. I mention all of these things, though, because while part of my existence is defined by being a black man in America who works in tech. As you can see by all these things here behind you, you can see my parents up there, it's my mom and dad next to the ocean. Um, it's just one part of who I am. And this is just like everybody here in this audience. You know, your jobs, your heritage, your families, all of these parts of you come together to make up the unique individual that you are. As we go through our lives, more parts are added. We have more influences. This is, that's who I am, more influences, more experiences, um, more people to help us grow, learn, and of course, ultimately change. And so I think we're constantly changing, and this is something that we really have to embrace. You know, that's why change matters, uh, because whoever you are, wherever you're from, we all have the power to evoke change, to go outside of our comfort zone and to evolve, so we can change the world into a better, more diverse, more inclusive, and more equitable place. And of course, I fundamentally believe that games can help us do just that. So why don't we take a look at why games matter? Um, some of you might know, of course, that the games industry is rather large. You know, over $203 billion, plus or minus a billion dollars here and there. It's like an extraordinarily large industry from a monetary perspective. But also 79% of the 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet engage with games in some form. Uh, one of the stats that I think is potentially most exciting and interesting and creates such a huge opportunity for all the things that we're doing is that 2.9 billion people on this planet are set to be active gamers by the end of this year. That's a lot of people. Games have the global reach and impact to connect with people on a personal level and also to be our catalyst for change. As an industry, we have come together over a host of challenges that were presented in the, to the world in the last couple of years. Our ability as an industry to create change has yielded quite positive results in a variety of ways. So from in-game item sales to corporate gifts to employee donations, celebrity-fueled fundraisers, the games industry has raised over $100 million to help people around the world get food, masks, healthcare treatment, and more during the pandemic. Uh, we even saw gamers uh, using compute time on their systems to you know, help AI systems better understand COVID-19. 
We also saw the games industry help people and many game studios employees flee the war in Ukraine. Uh, platforms shut down advertising and business operations as well to try to support people as much as possible. The games industry has really been coming together around a whole host of issues. Here in the United States, uh, the industry has rallied around uh, social justice, mental health, pride, trans rights, and women's rights as well. You know, I, I think that's great. I think it's wonderful. But I also believe that we have a long way to go before our industry is in a place that is welcome to all. But we're making progress, and that's the important point. So, so why don't we talk a little bit about uh, why you matter? Because you do. In fact, there are people across the globe who are right now proving why every single one of us in this room and around the world has the power to change the world around them. And I really want to tell you about a few of them. So in 2017, Google Play started an initiative called Change the Game. Change the Game aims to support and empower women as game players and creators. The team conducts research. They foster youth engagement, partners with forward-thinking organizations, and spotlights stories of success as they seek to improve representation in the mobile gaming world and create purposeful change in the industry. They're also launching a new white paper soon, um, diving into the intersectionality of women mobile players in the United States, helping all of us in the industry understand what we can do better to serve them. Now, while of course we're really proud of being one of many companies sponsoring such work, the effort is only as successful as the stories we're able to bring to the forefront to help shape the future of the games industry. These are your stories. They're not ours, they're yours. The stories of everyone around us, those people who are willing to take a risk and to do something awesome, something different. People who are willing to let themselves and their work shine for all the world to see. So I, I want to kick things off with sharing some of these stories to share a story about someone involved in the Change for Game initiative, Momo Pixel. She redefines who a game designer is, can be, and what games can do for equity and belonging. I would say I don't look like the stereotypical game designer at all. I don't think I look like a stereotypical anything. I'm Omo Pixel. I'm a game designer, developer, art director, and I make music. I definitely know what life is like when I cannot. There was a time in my life when I was put in positions when I didn't have control over my life, and so I had to listen to everybody around me, and I wasn't able to be myself. When I finally was free of all of that, I was like, <laughs> why would I ever not do what I want to do? Like, why would I ever not go for it? Why would I ever not be great? Uh, I mean, I'm passionate about what I do because I like what I do. One day I woke up and had an idea, and that idea had to exist as a game. And that idea was Heronaut. Heronaut is a simple web browser game. Ava is just trying to get from point A to point B. And the obstacles are other people's hands. They're just like, oh, your hair looks so, it's my hair. I think the game shed a lot of light on the difficulties that black women face, especially with our hair that black women go through. It showed the anxiety that happens you thought that this was meaningless or playful, but this actually heightens anxiety and frustration. You know, it really was a cultural moment and I had no idea it'd be this impactful. When I hear people say, like, are you a game designer? Are you an artist? Game design is art, so I'm both. Like, me and games make sense. Me and the art that I make, it makes sense. You don't meet a lot of black girls who are game developers. I understand the specialness and the rarity, but at the same time, it shouldn't be a rarity, right? Like, like join me, like, come on the quest. Just don't copy my outfit. <laughs> I try to keep the same joy kids have when they find something. That joy kind of gets stripped away from us as we get older. I don't know why the world does that, but I don't want that. I'm just passionate about the things that I like and I see nothing wrong with them. There's only do, there is no don't. You may not be able to do it to the way that you have seen it in your head, but you did it, you started. 
And as long as you continue and keep growing, then it's great. Today's a new day to be magical. Every day you get to choose what that magic is and who you get to be. If you want to make games, make games. You literally have the power to tell your own story. So do it. I think uh, that's such a, an inspirational uh, story to share. I wish we could all have you know, that joy and fervor for life and what we do. And like, that's what this talk is all about. It's like, how do you bring that to the table? How do you make that happen for all of those folks around you? Another story that I want to share is from a developer who's seemingly very different from Momo, but I believe they both have something very powerful in common. I'm now going to share the story of Florent Marin, a game designer who helped create Bury Me, My Love, an interactive game that tells the story of Syrian refugee Noor and her husband Maj as Noor undertakes a perilous journey to safety in Europe. I think you'll also find some great inspiration here. I think games as a medium are powerful. And it's even stronger when you try to make a game about reality, about real life events. And that's definitely what we tried to make with Bury Me My Love. I've been a journalist for 10 years and I've been a video games player for my entire life. And one day I thought, what happens if I try to make video games about real life? And that's kind of how I got into making video games, just with this idea. When I first read this article on French newspaper Le Monde, it was by Lucie Soulier, a French journalist. And it was about a young Syrian migrant named Dana and how Dana was able to stay in touch with her family thanks to her smartphone. Nowadays, most migrants have a smartphone. For them, it's not a luxury. They use it to stay in touch with their friends and family, exactly the way I would talk to my friends or my mother. This was super powerful, and I definitely thought it would be a strong basis for a reality-inspired game. Salut! So I got in touch with Lucy, and thanks to Lucy, we got in touch with Dana, and they both helped us make the most believable and realistic game possible. Were you able to see inside the boat, or was there just too many people in the boat? There was too many people on the boat, but the smugglers organized us. We can stand. I just saw the people, the sky, and how far we are going from Turkey. This must have been so terrifying. Once they were on board, I knew that we would have the good input in order to be right in the way we were going to tell this story. Nice. Bury Me My Love's story is about Noor and Maj. They are split apart because Noor wants to leave Syria and reach Europe and safety, but Maj cannot come with her. The only way they have to stay in touch is their cell phones. And you are going to play as Maj and try to advise and support Noor as best you can in order for her to reach her destination safely. Dana has been useful and her story has been incredibly inspiring. But we wanted to tell thousands of stories, thousands of destinies of thousands of different people who go different directions and end up in different places. Going to the refugee center was also very strong for me to understand what it's like to be in the situation. Obviously, winning the Google Play Indie Games contest was huge. And I was so happy for the team and for everybody who was involved in the game. Most of all, I was happy because it sent a message. If you do a game about the real world and very sensitive topics, there's a committee of seasoned professionals that say, OK, this is interesting. This is the game that struck us as something new. I hope lots of other game devs notice that and try to go the same path. Did it change their mind about migrants? Ah, that I don't know. But I'm not an activist. I just want them to be moved and to care. My first aim making the game was not to change people's mind. It was to tell the story. You know, the, the stories of Momo and Florent and so many others are just truly inspirational. 
I think what they have in common is the ability to inspire the world around them, to think differently, to make the world a better place. This is what the games industry can do, and I think what we can all do together. Um, another perhaps extraordinarily cool example of people bringing a unique idea to the world to make a difference, to matter, is one co-executive produced by the wonderful host of this event, Susanna Pollock and Games for Change. And Susanna mentioned it earlier um, on the morning you wake, but I wanted to, to delve just a little bit deeper here. I really hope that you're gonna be hearing a lot about on the morning you wake during, out, during the festival, but in case you somehow miss it, let's spend a moment on the critically acclaimed XR experience. You see, On the Morning You Wake uses innovative documentary storytelling and virtual production techniques to viscerally recreate the lived experience of people who, please listen closely, for 38 minutes had to react and make impossible decisions in the face of nuclear violence. Do you know what you would do when you have absolutely no choice but to understand that you matter? It's when this happens. On January 13th, 2018 at 8.08 a.m., imagine getting yourself, getting a text alert issued to the 1.4 million citizens of Hawaii. Ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. On the morning you wake to the end of the world, take your body back to the kai, to the place our kupuna taught us life began. First pole, then coral, then slime, then a whole universe fitting into a space smaller than a grain of sand. Nine one one, please fire ambulance. I just got an alert on my phone saying there was a ballistic missile inbound. Yeah, we just got it too. As much as you know, that's how much we know. Specific command has detected a missile threat to Hawaii. A missile may impact on land or sea within minutes. This is not a drill. If you are indoors, stay indoors. If you are outdoors, seek immediate shelter in a building. Remain indoors. Wake to the end of the world, your vision will be 2020. So use it. And maybe, just maybe, the world may not have to end again tomorrow. Um, it's, every time I watch that, I'm just like blown away about what that experience must have been. I, I think what's also powerful is the extent and the scale of the impact that we all have. You know, when we talk about scale at, at Google, we talk about two and a half billion people visiting Google Play to discover millions of apps and games. However, behind each of these apps is an entrepreneur who, or two or three or 12 or 10,000 or however many. They all have a unique story to tell. Some have been uh, programming since childhood, others just learned how to code, some live in busy cities, others in small towns. No matter how different their backgrounds are, however, these creators all have one thing in common, the passion to turn an idea into a growing business and an amazing experience. So we created an initiative called hashtag we are play. This celebrates and shares the stories of these people and of course, I'd like to take a moment to share another one with you. People who think I am too young to create things like this, well, I would say that's kind of their opinion. In my eyes, anything is possible. I've taught her from a very early age that she can be the change she wants to see. My name is Alyssa and I am the CEO of our game, Throwbells. When I was little, I used to be obsessed with dress-up games. But then I decided to come up to my mum and I said, why aren't there characters with Avril Hill in mind? I did the search and actually I found that there was very little to none. 
after a while, I said to her, do you want to create a game? Of course she jumped at the chance. I didn't have any developer experience or had developed a game at all. The Furrow Bells are three sisters with Afro hair. In our game, you can dress them, style them and add a background. They can take a picture. She's always had positive influences around her. We live in a house of four generations of women, plus my husband and my father as well. Having that family mix has been wonderful, especially for Alyssa to be able to bring those influences into the game. It was important to me so I could actually finally know that girls with Afro hair just like me could feel represented. We both went into this project new to it all, but we've learned so much. It's been a great bonding experience for both of us. This is a lovely hairstyle. I think it's very futuristic. We don't have anything like this on the game at all, do we? What do you think about these two styles as well? If I had to choose one of them, my favourite would be that one. Really? Why? Because it represents well the things that the fur bells actually love about their hair. Yeah. It's sweet and it's also so amazing and natural. The first kind of experience of the game was through Google Play. You're never sure just how many people will download but there has been thousands and thousands of downloads, which was not something I ever imagined. We're more than mother and daughter. I mean, you're voiceover artist. Uh, I'm creative director with business partners together. Updo with Fulani braids. Updo with Fulani braids. Rainbow locks, half up, half down. I didn't think four years ago that we would be creating a game. We went into this doing it for fun and actually the success has really shown what a difference you can make. It's really given us that imp to keep going and we're just getting started. Uh, Alyssa and Yvonne, they saw a problem. They saw a need for change, and they became the change they wanted to see in the world using the power of games. So I'll leave you guys, and I wanna, this is what I want to talk about, which is what is your legacy going to be? Look around you, to the left and to the right. Every single person in this room, online, watching this video, anybody around the world, every single one of you has the opportunity in front of you to create meaningful change. Just like Alyssa and Yvonne, you all matter. The hard part isn't knowing that it's possible. The hard part is figuring out what role you have to play. However, let me, in a, let, me let you in on a little bit of a secret, though. The role doesn't matter. Change isn't about doing everything. It's about doing something. So let me leave you with this. Do something. Anything. I implore you, make a difference. Bring people in, don't push people out. We have so many opportunities to reach those folks around us to help unlock their stories, to understand who they are and let them share their passions, their energy, their excitement with the world. This is real, amazing, positive stuff. And it's something that we can all do because we all have something to bring to the table. We have all have something to share. Remember, you do have what it takes. You are awesome. I believe in you, and I think you all need to believe in each other as well. I bet you probably didn't be expected to hit with the super cheesy stuff, you know, this earlier in the day. This is kind of what I do. It's what I'm really passionate about, and it's, I think it's also the best way to start off a festival like this, to hopefully inspire you to go out there and find those stories that are going to make a difference in the world. I encourage you to take this mindset with you throughout the event as you explore the world uh, for Games for Change. So why don't we just remember this? Change matters. Of course, games matter, and you matter. So why don't you get out there and uh, go change the world? Thank you.